Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Making it official. Today, the city of Detroit finding out who's now in charge of the fire department. Thanks for joining us at noon, everybody. I'm Jason Coulter. And I'm Rhonda Walker. The announcement was made about 45 minutes ago. Local 4 Sean Lay was there as the mayor introduced the new fire commissioner. Sean? Rhonda, guys, good to see you. We know Detroit Fire, one of the busiest, hardest working departments, most dangerous job, really, for fire departments around the country. This rig went out right before the news conference began. That's how busy these folks are. Big day for Chuck Sims. Now, fire commissioner, permanent fire commissioner, Charles Sims. He and his family, it was a glorious, really, occasion for him because let's show you some video of today's event. We're up here on the west side at one of the firehouses. And Chuck Sims was here, of course, and his family was here. Charles Sims spoke really emotionally about being with this department for 37 years, running into burning buildings. And now he's risen in the ranks of actually uh, leading the department and improving the, uh, the department. We have gotten to know Chuck Sims as he was interim fire commissioner because we have asked him many, many questions about ambulance response time and also how many ambulances are on the street at once. At one time, we knew and confirmed that up to 12, a dozen ambulances were closed throughout the city. So Charles Sims today says he's announcing with the mayor that response time is down dramatically and the number of ambulances are up dramatically. Here's the new fire commissioner, Chuck Sims. Right now we have over 100 people in the academy. They'll be out in time for the summer months and we'll staff those in ambulances. So I'm expecting for us to have an average of 45 ambulances per day for the summer. Back your life. That is a big jump. We have had numbers in the 20s. We asked the mayor about that. Really, the first time we asked the mayor of Detroit, we had a chance to ask him about, you know, what his concerns were when we were reporting and others reporting that so many ambulance units were closed. Now, up to 40 or more uh, on the street. We'll dig more into that. But guys, the response time also with those ambulances, more of them on the road, is now down to seven minutes and 15 seconds. The mayor points out, when he was elected, the mayor was 20 minutes for a city this size, and then recently they tried to get it to eight minutes, the national average, now they're below that. But also, a big day for Charles Sims. He's very pleased, so is his family and the fire department as well, uh, for him taking over as fire commissioner. Much more coming up later on Local 4. Back to you guys. All right, we'll see you then, Sean. As early as this afternoon, the Big Ten could announce potential punishment for the University of Michigan for illegally stealing signs of other teams. On Wednesday, the university sent a 10-page letter to the conference asking for due process. ESPN also reporting Michigan is ready to fight any potential punishments in court, including the suspension of Jim Harbaugh. There is a push to impeach Michigan's attorney general. State Representative James DeSanta is holding a news conference in Lansing to discuss the submission of his resolution of articles of impeachment for Attorney General Dana Nessel. The articles were co-sponsored by seven other Republican representatives and accused Nessel of malfeasance of office and malicious prosecution. This is in connection to the 16 Republicans she has charged in the fake elector scheme designed to try and help Donald Trump win the 2020 election. They're also upset that she did not charge anyone with election fraud. New to the newsroom, the White House announcing Israel has agreed to daily humanitarian pauses now to allow civilians to get out of that region. These pauses will last about four hours every day and there will be daily announcements to remind people of when and where to go. And staying in the Middle East, President Biden orders the U.S. military to launch a second retaliatory airstrike in Syria. This comes after dozens of attacks on U.S. forces in the region in the past few weeks. The actions are renewing fears, though. The U.S. could get dragged into a larger conflict in the region. Today, tensions escalating across the Middle East and the United States increasingly involved now, responding after U.S. bases have come under attack from Iranian-backed forces. Two U.S. fighter jets conducted an airstrike on a weapons storage facility in eastern Syria. The Pentagon says it was being used by Iran's Revolutionary Guard. It's the U.S.'s second retaliatory strike amid the ongoing Israel-Hamas war.
As concerns mount that Iranian-backed groups could widen the conflict. We have been very clear to countries in the region that we are incredibly keen on ensuring that this conflict does not spread. Since October 17th, the Pentagon says there have been about 41 attacks against bases housing American troops in Iraq and Syria. And Iran continuing to use its influence in other countries to target the U.S. And just yesterday, off the coast of Yemen, a U.S. defense official says an unmanned U.S. Reaper surveillance drone was shot down by Iran-backed Houthi forces while in international airspace. The Houthi forces released this video and claimed the drone was carrying out hostile spying activities. While all eyes are on Israel and Hamas, the United States aiming to contain the conflict. More than 40 troops sustained injuries in attacks before the U.S. strike, including at least 20 traumatic brain injuries. After nearly four months of striking, the Actors Union reached a tentative labor agreement with major film and TV studios. Alas, the SAG after union made the announcement yesterday. The deal will be reviewed by the union's national board tomorrow. If approved, the nearly 160,000 actors represented by the union will get back to work. One of the biggest issues was the rise of artificial intelligence in the industry. We worked hard to put together um, and have and push for a package that we felt comfortable with. And that's not an easy thing to do around AI because everyone is nervous about AI. It's a new thing in our contract. It's a new thing in the world. And um, we feel good about where we are. And of course, Hollywood suffered a one-two punch this summer when both the writers and the actors unions went on strike. A new face will be in the broadcasting booth for the Tigers as one of the top voices in the NLB, James Benetti. He signs a multi-year contract. Yeah, Jason Benetti joining the club as a TV play-by-play -play announcer. He's joining the Tigers after announcing for the Chicago White Sox for eight seasons. He's, he's actually from Chicago. In this new contract, he's set to announce at least 127 games this season. All right, we've creeped up to 54 degrees, which is, it's comfortable. I mean, it, we're not talking about frigid temperatures right now. It's a balmy 54, <laughs> Ron. It's not exactly Miami Beach, but it's not the worst. You know, for Michigan, we got to embrace it because we could easily have some snow right now. All right, clouds and radar. We are getting that sunlight starting to get into our area after a lot of cloud cover this morning. Now, we still have some clouds out there, but we're starting to make some improvement. No precipitation anywhere around. Now, if you watch us this morning, well, you know it was cloudy out there. Maybe you went out for work or for school and you saw all the cloud cover. Some places even had fog, but look at this scene right there. It is absolutely stunning. The temperatures rising accordingly as we get all this sunlight with us. 55 as you get into Detroit, that city airport, 51 in Howell, 51 also for Pontiac. Adrian, we're coming in at 53 degrees, but look at these sustained winds right now coming out of the west and the northwest. Right now, 22 miles per hour in Pontiac, and we have some of those gusts even higher. So what are we expecting for the rest of the afternoon? We continue to see this beautiful sunshine that we have out there. The clouds mainly up toward the north. You have to get up to the Saginaw area and northern portions of the thumb. Now, what we're going to be seeing is the continuation of some of those clouds trying to make their way down in our area, but we're going to see some beautiful conditions. So we're going to be talking a little bit about when we could see those temperatures changing. That is all coming up in just a matter of moments. But in the meantime, remember, all you have to do is download the Forewarn Weather app. You can get the latest information as well as a track 4D radar.